Hello and welcome back to Backstage Spotlight. In this week's episode, I'm joined by Elliot Slater, who is working on the Choir of Man in London in the lighting department. Hello. I am Elliot. indeed. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, doing good. It's my day off today, so. Oh, fantastic. Do you get all Mondays off? Every Monday, every Monday. That's so good. For the people who don't know, do you want to just say a bit about your role as um in the lighting department at the Choir of Man? Yeah, what you of do? Course. yeah, so I'm head of lighting at Choir of Man on the West End. So I'm in charge of everything to do with lighting. So if you watch the production, anything that's a light, that's me. So all maintenance of the fixtures and the team we have on the Choir of Man. So yeah, it's a, that's, a that's fun true. show. <laughs> Yeah, what a good show to work on. I've seen it twice and it the atmosphere in that room is just so good. Honestly, it's the audience that make the difference. Every single night is different. So. That must be so cool because for people who haven't seen it, it's a bit like audience interaction, isn't it? Yes, and yeah, very much. I wanted to ask you this. Have you ever had any moments of audience interactions that have been unforgettable? Like any stories well, we had literally it was two shows ago. We had um, Tommy plays the Beast. Um, they do their um, little song in the corner, and it's I won't spoil too much of it, but they um, it was a very fun <laughs> moment. She got very much into the character. Usually, when they've had a couple too many drinks, they are even better on the stage, and it just like the whole team will be laughing. We all have our comms on for the whole show. We just all <laughs> have a giggle about it, and yeah. So if you're on stage, bear in mind we are all having a laugh if you're being funny so play the character be just do the wrong we'll all love you for it that is so funny it is every time I when I went on the different times the people who got called up were so different and it does change it and it's how like the actors adapt as well yes yeah what the audience bring in and it's so brilliant did you Um, get a free pint when you came did you get given one um I we got pint tokens yeah no but very nice one um when they came into the auditorium well, next time you come, make sure you sit on the end of the rows. You are yeah, end of you the have rows. a higher chance then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so lighting, how did you get into yes. it? Well, my family is all from kind of like a musical theatre background and they're all kind of like really? performers and they just do it like amateur. But then I was like, you know what? I, I don't really want to be a performer. What What is there that I can do that isn't performing? And I was like, well, technical theatre. So it took me a little while to figure out what I wanted to do and then kind of lighting was the chosen one so yeah. I've kind of followed through that uh studied at college and then went on I did it on a cruise ship for a year and a half instead of lighting um and then yeah it's kind of I've done all different types of lighting so like events and stuff so I did Creamfields Festival for the last two years so oh, it's cool. like yeah it's, it's a big world of lighting yeah it's so interesting because when you think of shows like that's not the first job you think of but oh. when you think about it, it's so in depth. And obviously, you said you've trained um, at college in lighting. Yep. And on the cruise, what show did you do for the cruise, or was it like a variety show? We had thirteen different shows, so there oh was a God. lot to do. <laughs> Every night, different show for two weeks, and it's just. Does your brain get scrambled with how many different like lighting? Yeah, there, there was a few different days when I went up to the theatre not knowing what show I was doing that day. And I was like, oh, <laughs> we're doing this show. And there was one on the ships that was very similar to Choir of Man. So that was like a nice little. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, when you're doing like, what's it like being on a cruise ship? Oh, it is the best experience. You are like, I've been, I've done the whole of the Mediterranean. I've done the whole of the Caribbean. You get to see so many different places and it gives you like a a real understanding of the world it's just like well yeah I bet this, is, this good, is how everyone lives their lives it's yeah it's such a good great. travel experience yeah um do you get much downtime to visit the places that the cruise yeah. ship stops at so I didn't have to be into work until about five in the evening to do our, so we did three shows basically in the evening so we did a tech run and two performances yeah so it would be the whole daytime I could go and spend like on the beaches in the Caribbean and then go back onto the ship and do my real job it's a little fantasy world kind of thing that is so good and obviously because you're on the ship you get like fed watered accommodation oh yeah it's a good like way to save money isn't it especially when you're oh yeah it's a very good at saving especially when London's so expensive you come back you're like well I've got a little bit this to... <laughs> yeah ex- exactly London prices have gone through the roof oh, yes um when you were at college how did you decide you wanted to go like do a course in lighting well I was just 
I didn't really want to go down like the education path where it's like you sit in a classroom, you do your essays and then that's yeah. it. I wanted to be like, well, I, I love lighting and I want something practical. So I looked around and found Boa. Boa. Birmingham was an academy. Oh, and they oh. were really at the time the only place near me that specialized in that kind of thing. Yeah. So I did the first year where I did stage management, lighting, sound, so all of the departments in theatre to kind of understand what we want to do. And the second year was more specialized. So then we moved into like, what we wanted to do so I chose lighting uh loads of other people did like stage management stuff and we ran the shows we built the set for the shows we did everything from like the That's ground so up cool. that was it was insane and like what kind of assessments did you have to do it was it was more like evaluating the work we did so yeah. like with my lighting it would be what would I do in the future better and why I use different things so like different techniques of lighting it, yeah. it's just kind of and do you have a mind a big do you have a big say in like the design of it or is there often like a lighting designer and then you program it how does that work so we did it a bit differently to the west end we kind of designed and programmed at the same time so we got the same knowledge but in the west end world you have programmers you have designers and then you've got kind of your production lx team who do all of the rigging and maintenance kind of things around the fit up time so yeah and you do you do a bit of that rigging yeah as well, don't you for the choir of man yes yeah how many people are on the lighting team for the show? Choir of Man, we have, um, so in the building at a time, you've got me as the head of lighting. We've got a tech swing as well, who um, goes between the different departments. And yeah. like, if anyone's ill or we need something, we'll get the tech swing in. But then we've also got a production electrician um, who comes in and helps us out as well on a few days a week, just to kind of, so we can sort any issues we have in the week. Yeah. Um, there are some, secret bits in the show that have lights in which no one will really know there's the lovely urinal that comes on stage and saying that oh, i have to yeah. plug in every rechargeable urinal always is entertaining <laughs> it's it's like oh, what did you do with it oh, i fixed the urinal and it's like well no other show will you ever say that <laughs> it's such a funny show if Honestly. people haven't seen it they actually need to go because it's brilliant i took my dad um, my family took my dad for father's day and it's just such a good one to go with like your family, specifically if That's you've it. not got like a family who are really big in musical theatre because yeah. it's like, fun for everyone. It's well, just... You've got like a whole age range as well going. You've got like old people that like, you, you get going out into the, like the auditorium, like after the show and just w watching people walk out. It's like you hear all the stories. It's like, I didn't think I'd enjoy this, but like I'm like 85 years old and it was the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah it's brilliant what's the first thing you ever worked on like professionally professionally um would have been so we did a panto in Birmingham um it was Alice in Wonderland that was the first professional show I worked on and I was um stage Alex and flies it's fun it's a it's, it's a panto it's great yeah what's flies yeah. like it's fun um obviously it's a lot more dangerous than pressing go <laughs> so yeah. you've got a lot more to think about and a lot more to watch but um yeah You've got to listen for your calls and then fly your cloths in it's, yeah it's fun it's great fun I went to a theatre tour of the Theatre Royal Drury Lane yesterday really they were talking about flies and how in the olden days they used to like communicate by whistling yeah because it was like um on a ship yeah yeah that's why it's called like the scene dock like things like like the that, that's why that's why that the um you can't whistle in theater comes about because if you were to whistle in the olden days they'd fly a cloth yeah in. the like, fly would just drop <laughs> here we go <laughs> yeah but that you don't whistle anymore do you no no still there's no <laughs> still no whistling <laughs> imagine if, if through the show you can just hear whistling like coming from the top <laughs> oh yes yeah this is why we have comms now you can just talk to everyone nicely yeah um how much does lighting and sound like overlap um on our show not very much um we're kind of like separate teams Obviously, we yeah. help each other out in kind of that aspect but we're in like other shows so i use like um so back at college when we did adam's family yeah. we had to communicate because we use this thing called time code which yeah. is basically if there's a track running it runs a track to the lighting desk so the cues automatically fire so when oh. you start using all that stuff it kind of crosses over and we also have yeah. that on the ship so if you ever watch a, a show on the ship you get on some west end shows as well the lighting off is not touching anything. It's all running all to time code. That's so everyone on stage needs to be in their spotlights at the right time. Otherwise, it looks terrible. Yeah. Has there any been like massive mishaps where it's 
made you look like you've done the lighting wrong just because like performers haven't um, stood in their right spots there's been a couple of times on choir of man but we have a nice word with the cast and they <laughs> usually by the next show it's it's back to how it should be yeah but it, it, on it's the, a thing as well when we have swings this is why we have swing runs um yeah. is to make sure that everyone is in where they've got to be because the swings i don't understand how they do it having so many shows and you guys are like swing projects and stuff i'm like how do you remember all of these roles i'm just like wow yeah um, it's crazy and from crazy. the performer side of it hearing stuff from the like lighting department it makes yeah. you realize like how important um it's like stand on this number at this point like it's so important to take all that in because yes. you yeah. don't see it from the front of the stage and you don't see where that light lands and it's no you've got to you've got to be where you've got to be on the mark <laughs> yeah exactly um, if you had a dream show that you wanted to work on, what would it be? Probably Frozen. I love that show. That would um, be so good. The lighting it is insane. Um, I had a backstage tour there a couple of weeks ago, and it's just the amount of gear they've got in that theater is insanity. It's huge, that theater as well. Honestly. It's so good. Um, the wing space. <laughs> Pardon? Massive. The wing space is massive. You've got like the whole width of the stage again in the wings. It's like, <laughs> how, how do you fit stuff here? Did you go through the underneath tunnel? The underneath tunnel? This is new. It was at the Theatre Old Drury Lane. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, when I went yesterday, they took us under the stage and there's like a tunnel of where they used to like cross over and like back in oh. when the theatre just opened. And it's no, like, oh, I didn't, I didn't get brought down there. It was really cool. And they, um, dug up like the walls because there's tunnels running wow. through like there's one running to the Thames and oh, it's wow. still there it was that's, that's the thing about these old theatres there's so many places you can go and work at one and you will just never ever see all of all of it it's just like well this is from like yeah. 25 million years ago and it's like still here yeah it was crazy and there was also the shell of uh like a capsule bomb from when the theatre was bombed really? back in like 18 something and it was that's still so there funny. It was actually it was crazy. insane. And there was pictures of when like the stalls, like the theatre was destroyed and then how they rebuilt it. So interesting. Oh, yeah. I just got to do this tour. I need to book on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, also, there was like ghost stories. There's so many I ghost heard stories. a lot of movie. them at Jury Lane. Yeah. Like uh, um, when the cast stand back on the stage and if they see it, it's like good luck. All yeah. That that's... sort of stuff. It's so fun to like hear. It's crazy, but I don't think yeah. the arts theatre ha will have. Do you know of any ghost stories at the arts theatre? No, we're a bit pretty boring theatre for that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite it. It's newer than a lot of the West yeah, End. Yeah, it's quite modern, so isn't it? There's not really any of those stories. Um, we just yeah. mainly we just talk about how the shows have fit in there. It's like how the how did Bonnie and Clyde fit in the arts theatre? No one will ever know. Yeah, I saw <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde in the arts theatre. How? That's, and then you watch Choir of Man. That, like, oh. That's crazy. Thinking yeah. back, Bonnie exactly. and Clyde, and um, Six was also there as well. Yeah, Six opened on the West End, and yeah, that's quite a nice one. theater for Six because I feel it's quite personal and. Quite yeah, that's that's kind of lives. that's the arts like niche. It's like if you want that audience interaction because it's so small and it's so yeah. like customizable how you do your shows there. It's like you can you can set it up how you want it and having like. The the auditory. If you've watched Choir of Man, you'll know the auditorium is painted red. So that yeah. was added. So that was painted when Choir of Man moved in. Oh really? And all the pictures down the side, we added all those and all the oh, lights. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like you're sat, like a pub. sat in the pub. Yeah. Yeah, that's the. Oh yeah, that's, the that's so good. It's just the little details like that. It's so clever. I'm yeah. um, going back to Frozen. There's yeah. like projections in Frozen. Yes. That are honestly insane. Insanity. Is that part of the lighting department's job? So we have a, so in technical theater, you have a video department as well. So okay. sometimes lighting will operate the cues for video, but there is a video team who's in charge of all the projectors and making sure that they're all working and the yeah. video is in the right place. So on Frozen, they've got a good team. Um, so they've got a separate team just because of how big it is, but the lighting still fires the video. So uh, it's, yeah. everything is, it, that show is just down to a T. It's very precise. Yeah, the projections are just... Up you watch well. it and you're like what how <laughs> oh, is this even possible have you seen abba voyage not yet i'm going this week though i've got holiday this week are so you i'm off to go and see it 
When are you going? What night? I haven't booked it yet, but I'm going. <laughs> it's incredible. It's so good. The light, I wanted to speak about that because it's like holograms. Yes, yeah. And it's like you sit there and you actually think that it's them. And it's it's so mind, like, it's such a mind game because you're like, they are real, but they're, yeah, it's, but that, they're just Yeah, that's not. a good case of like how all of our departments cross over with each other. Cause it's like, without the video, you wouldn't, you have to like work with them to get the lighting to look right and stuff. So it's, it's a whole game where you all have to get involved um, to make yeah. it look good basically. So it's a. I would have loved to be like in their initial meetings where they were trying to figure it all out yeah. because I just can't even, I don't even have any words for it. And um, no, it's you're literally just looking at them like that is literally a real person like it's real but that... i know it's not but it is real yeah and they have really cool like lighting fixtures all around the that are like a arena you're making me more excited that it's incredible like as a lighting person you'll be sat there like i like abba's on stage now my eyes are <laughs> <laughs> no you honestly walk in and it's like there's spotlights all around the room nice and um, the projection work, oh, it's just fantastic. I saw it last night and it was just like, oh, really? yeah. And we went for my dad's birthday and we were all just sat there like jaws dropped. We were like, how is this? How is this happening? Yeah. And oh, I'm not going to give too much away, but like Honestly. projection mixed with lighting, mixed with that hologram thing they do. Lost for words. Yes. <laughs> It all it all goes together very well though. It's, I've seen loads of the production photos and it just all like works well together. I'm like, I want to see how all this works. And I'm gonna go. Yeah, it's really one that you shouldn't miss. It's good. I think it's the future of concerts because yeah. that takes audiences back to like I wasn't even born when ABBA were performing like touring. No, and it's still like a massive thing. This thing. And that whole that whole arena is like portable. They can just take the whole thing down and move it to another venue. Uh, that's like really? how they built it yeah it's all transferable so you can literally pack it all down bring it somewhere else and re like put it back up i think they're gonna go on tour i think so we'll find out yeah we will find out but i think you know they could do that with like like the beatles like i think they'll oh, yes do, like, yeah freddie mercury oh freddie mercury hologram would be great i would <laughs> freddie i'd mercury be there hologram. yeah <laughs> which one the rocket man as well Yes. Um. What's his name? This is bad of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slipped my memory, but um, but that one as well. That would be a good. Concept. That would, yeah, very, 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 very cool. So um. So, Inquire of Man, what are your favorite lighting moments? Favorite lighting moments will have to be in Hello. It's just so oh. like. You've got the light that's pretending to be a TV. That's a great touch, <laughs> and it's just like it. It's very. I don't know it's just very just nice it, just, it yeah. just looks nice and it, it's very much like your attention is on Luke who's the romantic and yeah. you just you, you're watching him but then you've also got everyone doing their slow motion around it so it's kind of it's very well lit it's yeah bit... and then also the um the urinal scene obviously because yeah that's funny it, it, that has the best audience reaction every night it's you could have the quietest audience and then that scene comes and you just <laughs> Even pina colada, sometimes we get pina colada very, very quiet. And then as soon as you get to that bit, it's like, well, there we go. There's the audience. Yeah. Is there any bits that are like frantic where you're like, right, now I need to like concentrate? Um, 500 miles. Yeah. Every single time those blinders go off, I have to sit there and it's just constant pressing go. It's <laughs> And if I miss one of them, it's just like, well, I'm behind now. <laughs> There's no way oh. to sneakily do that. And then all I jungle won't... stomp as well. Jungle stomp is difficult because there's no dialogue. So when that when I had my um when I was applying for the job, part of the meeting was about if I could read sheet music. Oh. So part of the criteria for this one is to be able to read sheet music because we're the only show on the West End that doesn't have a DSM. So I have to so we have to remember all of the cues ourselves. Yeah. So the stage manager team on a usual show, you've got the stage manager, the deputy stage manager, and then you've got the ASMs. Yeah. Um, but we don't have a DSM, so it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I have to concentrate the whole time, which is fun. Yeah. So how would you like generally go and apply to be a lighting um, on the lighting team of a show? Like what's the so application process? You've a lot of the technical side of thing is word of mouth. So yeah, you, you get recommended still, but um, sites like Mandy are great. You can, there's a lot of jobs going up on there. You can see and know who to apply with. Um, but 
the whole criteria it's just if you have a passion for it and you you love what you do you, you'll be fine um yeah and it's and a whole thing for me as well because I'm still young and he- as head of department at my age it's like well this is yeah. unheard of so it's if you want to do it don't let age hold you back if you have yeah. the abilities to do it just do it it's yeah, like nice and is it like it. usually like sit down interview and as yeah, you said, it, like criteria like sheet music most of the time yeah it's sit down have a chat about like what you've done in the past thing um stuff and like what you're proud of what, what work you've done what you're proud of doing is that kind of thing that yeah you're looking for that sounds good it's it's crazy how it's like a whole different world but yeah. like your like lighting department is like my performing yeah yeah so well, you, you get some audience members who like I'll be stood like outside my lighting booth after a show and they'll come up to you and be like I didn't realize that lighting was a there was someone actually doing that I thought it just happened I was like well there's a whole team of us it's like you watch Frozen it'd just be like well you've magically turned into an ice palace now but how did you turn into an ice palace <laughs> no more no yeah it's just because people just because it's the behind the scenes thing as well yeah they'd be so interested of how many people are actually like around the oh, stage yeah. and like doing yeah. like backstage stuff it's so interesting so many of us <laughs> so many yeah there's it's probably even to like even in... to like the fact of um if we if you get that comment from the audience we know we've done our job right because we're not meant yeah. to be there you're not meant to know we exist so if you, <laughs> if you know we exist we've done something wrong that's it's rewarding yeah. <laughs> um there's probably in most shows more people backstage than there yes. is on stage yeah definitely yeah, yeah, there's always a. I forgot the statistics. I think I think it's like two texts to one performer on a, yeah. on a like an average for a show, which is insane to think about. You've got if you have like a cast of like twenty five to thirty, like on Frozen, you think you've got like tons yeah. of people, just like sixty costume, plus wig, makeup, yeah, all of that, like insane. So many people. I once did um, lighting <laughs> for. <laughs> one of my college shows and oh, nice. at the start it was all right we like teched it and I was just sat in the booth like helping our like yep. tech guy at college and um I had to write all the cues down and I basically was the one saying like go go like oh nice bye yeah. and in one of the shows <laughs> I misread the time because there was like a track playing and at a certain point in the track I had to give like a cue and I thought it was like one like two minutes in instead of one minute in oh really I said go and these poor dancers were in like the dimmest like (laughs) it had like a mesh like gauze thingy on it and yeah. it was not meant to be in the dark and they were like and I was just like oh my gosh how'd you get out of this um, and I, I think he had it on like a clicky thing, like a programming thing where it's just like all yeah. in one long line and you just press go and it goes on to the next. Yeah. Thing. And I think he had to come out of the programming to go back to the previous oh, really? setting. So I messed that one up. So we just left them in the dark for the next. <laughs> <week>. <laughs> yeah, it's, hard. it's not it a easy job. I, I wouldn't want to be a DSM on any of like the, like I've heard Sunset Boulevard is a difficult one for the DSM. So oh. many cues in that show yeah and just like Um, visual cues like audio cues and then like like time stamps and stuff like that it's actually it's just a bit like your brain you have to constantly be alert and then something happens and it was a cue and you're like oh i've missed it press yeah (laughs) and and people forget as well with the the dsm when they're calling their cues they have to read what cue they're on and then they also have to check say if it's like an automation cue they've got a check that people are out of the way and that the automation operator will also check that they're out of the way but they've got to look up look around and see where everyone is and then yeah. it, it's insane I, I I don't know how I don't think I could do that job <laughs> and also if it's like a physical cue like a dance move or something yeah and that person like doesn't do the dance move or it's a swing and they forget yeah. just that one little cue and then the lighting doesn't go on because we, we have that on choir of man sometimes with like because we have so much audience interaction like if yeah. they're handing out beers to the audience sometimes they'll be back up the stairs late so you've always got to keep an eye on like a million and one different things to be like right so i have to count how many people come back from front of house so i'm just like right we've got bed <laughs> we've got everything <laughs> and then as soon as the last person's there i'm like okay i can go now yeah do you have like a manual house lights for when they go out yeah it's in the it's in the cue set so we have just a, it's a running 
queue stack. So yeah. you've got like, I think we have 350 queues in our show. So for a 90 That's minute show, crazy. it's quite a lot. Yeah, that is. Um, a- but you will just hit go and it will go and bring the house lights up and then you'll hit it again and it'll go back down. So it's just all in the stack. Yeah, yeah. You've got, a, I think- you've got a, the last thing you want really is people handing out beers in the audience to be in the in pitch black darkness. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause> that was. <laughs> When I did my college show, I think we had about 32 queues and I found that quite challenging. So <laughs> 350 is, yeah, that's... Yeah, in a 90 minute show, it's it's good going. Yeah. And having the band on the top of the stage, I think yes. adds to it so much, like seeing them playing the music and then being like a part of the scene. Yeah, when they come down onto stage, yeah, that's a... Is it they're, they're good guys. The drummer was very memorable. Nana? Nana Bonsu, yeah. Oh, we love Nana. A legend. <laughs> He's that is some of my best moments of the show. If if you ever meet Nana, ask him to sing a song for you. It is the greatest thing. He doesn't know any words past the first like first verse, and then it's that's it. Then <laughs> Nana's just making it's making noises. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Are you quite like a close cast? Yeah, because we're all such a small team. It's just yeah. We know everyone. Our green room is right next to all the dressing rooms. So we just see everyone every day. And it's just like a nice little family we've got going. So that's really nice. Do you have any traditions as part of the team that you do? Traditions. Mario Kart is a big one. (laughs) Mario Kart. (laughs) Mario, pretty sure Mario Kart. They had to put a ban on it a couple of weeks ago so that they get in the costumes in time because it'd be that intense. But it gets (laughs) it gets very tense in those dressing rooms. Is there like a Wii or like a PlayStation backstage? They've got yeah, they've got a Nintendo Switch in there. They just hooked up to oh, a little TV. That is or if Formula, if any sports on, if the cast are ever late coming downstairs, it's because someone is winning in football or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, like the Formula One's on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Formula oh, One's been a big one the last couple of weeks. Pardon? Formula One was a big one a couple of weeks ago. They were just all yeah. around this. There's a lot. 20 of us just watching Formula One on the smallest screen possible. <laughs> it's so funny to hear what goes on backstage. Yeah, it, they're not, they're crazy on stage, but they're also crazy off stage is a, <laughs> a good way to put it. That's good. And how often does the cast change over? So I'm pretty sure it's every six months or so. Um, yeah. So we had one in July so that they've still got a bit of time. This cast has still got quite a bit of time left. Um, I think it's six months. I can't remember yeah. to be honest with you. Um, but um, I think February is about the time this cast leave. So not, yeah. not too far off, but still enough time with them. Yeah, I came to see the last cast's final yeah. performance. Oh, bless. Um, and it's it's nice seeing that because it's like a bit, it's like a wholesome evening because it's the last yeah. time they do it. And then at the end, they get their round of applause for the last night. And yeah, it's a, most of the time, like they go off and do other shows or have things lined up. Yeah, would like to stay on, but life happens, doesn't it? And yeah, life moves around in the West End. Everyone goes everywhere. So, are you planning to stay with Choir of Man? How long for? I am on Choir of Man until it finishes, which we can't talk about. But okay, <laughs> um, when it until until a long time, time. Uh, a while. <laughs> But and, we, um, we do have a Christmas album coming out, though. Do you? We do. We've got the Choir of Man Christmas album. It's oh. a it's your favorite Christmas songs, but with a Choir of Man twist. So, first oh. of December. First of December. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll look out yeah. for that one. That's oh, that's going to be really good. Yeah, it's good. I've heard a couple of the songs in it, and it'll be very good. And if you come to the show um, from the fifth of December, you'll get some different pre-show music. So it's a little Christmas twist. Oh, yeah. I love all it's these some, little add-ons. Yeah. yeah. So 1st of December, Christmas album. Christmas album comes out. 5th of December, Christmassy pre-show music. Yeah. And what some other little bits. You... Which... Yeah. What more could you ask for? I don't know. You can't ask for anything more from the choir of man. We're giving you everything this Christmas. Exactly. It's a brilliant show. It's so, so good. Um, last question. Yes. What is your ultimate favourite lighting setting? Lighting setting in the show or in general? In general, like your favorite, like, oh, yes, I love a red wash, like something like that. <laughs> favorite lighting setting? Um, it would have to be. So, do you know you have the sight to the back of a stage? So, the big uh, white. Oh, yeah, color. like a cyclorama. Yeah, yeah. So, when they're lit, you can do like sunrise and sunset effects on them. Oh. And that is my favorite thing to do because you can make it 
look just like a, a sky backdrop, but it's actually a cloth. That's so you just so change cool. the lights in a certain way and it looks like the sun is rising. That is my probably like all-time a favorite. gradient. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And how do you do that? Is it just by putting different colors like through it? Yeah. So we have, you have a row of lights at the top of it and a row of lights at the bottom. Yeah. So that you can change the color to it, like, cause they're LEDs. Um, you can change them to any color. Um, but yeah, if you light in a certain way, so you can like the bottom one color and the top the other, and like it will transition in the middle. It looks very nice. That so. is so cool. I didn't know yeah. that. See, it's just these little things. learning all the tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Elliot. It's so lovely to no talk problem. to you. Yeah, and, lovely to um, everyone listening, make sure you go watch Choir of Man and make sure to tell Elliot he's doing a great job. Yeah, wave at me. I'm in the little window at the back. You can you can always find me. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. And for those of you listening, see you in the next episode.